Yeah, I know I'm late to the whole Spider-Verse hype, but honestly, this video from the guy who has the Miguel O'Hara PNG guy thingy, I felt like it was long overdue. And I found the perfect reason to make this video because I don't see video essays that talk specifically about what I'm about to talk about. By the way, spoilers ahead. And if you didn't read the title, I'm going to be talking about probably the best scene of Across the Spider-Verse, which is Miguel versus Miles, on top of the train heading to the moon. Just saying that if you want more videos like this, the best way to get that is to interact with this video as much as possible, like watching the full thing, liking, disliking, and commenting. I don't want to waste any more time, and although I could go back and talk about what happened previously before the train even arrives, I just want to specifically focus in on the train because this is where the meta metaphorical meat of the bone is. Now, as Miguel is chasing after Miles, it starts the train scene off with a crucial moment because in a split second, if you blink, you miss it, you watch Miguel rip the wristband off of Miles. It's a small little moment that reveals more than your brain was comprehending. The wristband keeps him from glitching out, and that is evident a second later. But something that you don't really take into mind is that if he doesn't get another, he dies and that the only way to get another is if he gets another one from the spider society that he is betraying and is currently running away from. These subtle little things come back to an insane revelation later on because of how Miles at the end of the movie is stuck in the wrong universe and doesn't have any protection over the glitching. But if we get back to the fight scene, Miles also has to worry about the speed of the train, as although a trained Spider-Man, the intensity of how fast it's going is almost too much for a web to handle. And now that he can start glitching and almost fall off of it, especially because of the fact the train is on its way to the moon. Miles is also pulled into another position because Miguel, although falling off the train initially, is now back on Miles and with his claws is able to catch up to Miles faster than he can get away. The reason my explanation is so detailed like this is because in the intensity of the scene and the fast pace, your brain is only really worrying about Miguel coming after Miles, but disregards the other important implications, and that you don't really know how screwed Miles is until you take a step back and look at everything going on against him. Also to take into mind how Miguel hints at the true reality of Miles being Spider-Man early into the fight, but we, we'll touch on that in a second. And as a kind of rehash of the leap of faith moment from the first movie, Miles decides and knows he can't run forever, and that at some point he needs to be able to escape because he's either going to die in space when they leave Earth's atmosphere, or get caught by Miguel and have to watch his father die. What went from a chase now escalates into a fight between Miguel and Miles. Just to skip ahead a bit, I want to play the scene for you. Did you catch that? Maybe you didn't. Uh, let me just pause it right here. Right here? Yeah? Familiar? I sure hope so, but anyways. Throughout this fight section, we see that there really isn't anyone that has an advantage over the other, because Miguel is hitting hard, but Miles is also getting away from his attacks. Until all of a sudden... You're the original anomaly! Miguel drops a bombshell and starts to explain to Miles what he really is. You're a mistake! Something that fascinates me each time I watch this scene is the key role music plays. If you were to just listen to track 28, Nueva York Train Chase, you can actually hear all these key moments. You know exactly when this scene happens as the music dies down and what's left is an ominous whistle, signifying Miguel gaining the upper hand, as Miles denies and loses focus on Miguel's actions because he is too focused on Miguel's words. I hope you know what Miguel says so I don't have to repeat any more about this, but I will say that it really shows the progression of Miguel O'Hara, as originally he was trying to reason with Miles, but now is full on traumatizing him with the words that not only is his identity fake and that he's a fraud, but that whether or not it was intentional, obviously it wasn't, Miles is the reason Peter Parker is dead and that Spot exists in the first place and also that he will be the reason for his dad's death, as he realized the people he thought were his friends lied to him and betrays him. It's an extremely heavy scene that leaves Miles with little room to do anything, but remember how I brought up the fact that little moments matter? There is a split one second of Miles realizing that he can conduct energy off of Miguel's suit. It's only a realization that he has an opportunity to escape, 
which believe it or not, I can't show it because of copyright, but this is the moment the music kicks in once again. The music, if you haven't caught on, is Miles' emotions during the scene, as when it's not in his favor, the music dies down and loses focus, just like how he does when Miguel tells him that he's a mistake. The music is continuously stressful while Miguel and Miles are fighting because Miles himself is worried that his plan might not work and that he might let his dad die because of it. If you were to just listen to the track without the visuals, sound effects, or talking, you would still be able to understand the emotion of the piece and who's winning in that moment. So when Miles has his opportunity to get away, the music ramps up in a buildup that takes my breath away each time I watch it. A perfect use of music and shows its capabilities, while the visuals keep the audience hooked in with the intensity as the speed of the train keeps the scene feeling like it's not slowing down whatsoever, as it leaves your brain scrambling, as it throws more stuff at you. But everything all of a sudden becomes clear when you see Miles spark some energy out of Miguel's suit, because the movie knows you are glued to the screen and taking in everything it's throwing at you. So for Miles to finally have his chance, revealing his plan was to lure everyone away from the go-home machine so he can use it all comes together in a satisfying moment that gives me chills watching it, as we see the contrast of the ominous whistles to now, as we realized who really is at the upper hand with this. As Miles blasts Miguel away after telling him that he's going to write his own story and save his dad. As he takes one last look at the people he thought he could trust before vanishing into thin air with a heroic jingle. All of a sudden to be disturbed by Miguel's persistence. This specific scene without diving into the rest of the movie is probably one of Spider-Man's greatest moments. Not just a part of the Spider-Verse franchise, but of all time. A scene that rivals the likes of the leap of faith from the first movie, but too hard to compare to each other because of how different yet still effective they both are. It still lets you see through the perspective of Miles by listening to the music and it grabs you and doesn't let go as it throws a lot of stuff at you that is still digestible for your brain to handle, but you may miss some of the implications of the scene. The Nueva York train chase is a special train fight scene that uses everything around it to its advantage to be as amazing as it possibly can be subverting the expectations we had for Miles as the scene progresses. Thank you everybody for watching. I'm Enchanted. Bye.